Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the Johns Hopkins School of Education Gifted Education Virtual Information Session. My name is Sian Yan, and the Assistant Director of Admissions here at the Johns Hopkins School of Education. Also here with me, I'm my colleague from the Office of Admissions, and he will introduce himself. Thank you, Sian. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Uh, welcome and congratulations. Uh, I know that for many of you, you're here today to find out more about our gifted education program uh, and look to pursue and take that next step in your educational journey. So again, congratulations on taking that first step to learn more. My name is James McCarty. I'm the Associate Director of Admissions here at the School of Ed at Johns Hopkins. Uh, and my big message for all of you today uh, is that you are never going through this process alone. Uh, my role in admissions, uh, I'm the liaison for our office uh, for the Gifted Education Program. So I look forward to connecting with all of you after this webinar. Uh, I'm happy to chat one-on-one -on -one via email, setting up a Zoom meeting. Uh, but again, most importantly, just know that you are not going through this process alone, and I'm here to walk with you every step of the way. Enjoy the webinar today, and I look to chat again real soon. Thanks, everyone. We also have Professor and Faculty Lead, Dr. Carrie Gabal, joining us today. Please note, today's webinar is being recorded. We will share the link to the recorded video within one week. Please type your question in the Q&A box at the end of the presentation, and we'll answer your questions. I'd like to share the agenda for today's virtual webinar. We will kick off the presentation sharing an overview of the Johns Hopkins School of Education. Then Dr. Gabal will go over program information on the Gifted Education Program. Lastly, we'll wrap it up with admissions requirements, go over financial aid, and leave the floor open for questions at the end. And to start, we are one of nine schools at Johns Hopkins University. We began offering college courses for teachers in 1909, and then we became our own school in 2007. We are proud to share that the Johns Hopkins School of Education is consistently ranked one of the top schools in education by the U.S. News and World Report. And for school enrollment, we have approximately 1,741 students, and we offer 25 graduate programs, which includes our doctoral, master's, and graduate certificate programs. We have approximately 109 full-time faculty members, and we have over 24,000 SOE alums. And for faculty introduction, Dr. Carrie Gabalt is an assistant professor and faculty lead for the Gifted Education Graduate Programs at Johns Hopkins University and recipient of the 2019 National Association for Gifted Children Early Leader Award. She has worked as a district supervisor of gifted and talented programs in Maryland and as a teacher of the gifted in both Florida and Maryland. Dr. Gibalt research interest includes academic acceleration, parenting the gifted, and effective characteristics in need of the highly gifted. We also have Dr. Jonathan Plucker, another gifted education faculty member, the Julian C. Stanley Endowed Professor of Talent Development at John Hopkins University, and he works in both the center for Talented Youth and the School of Education. Dr. Plucker is a past president of the National Association for Gifted Children and the Society for the Psychology of Aesthetics, Creativity, and the Arts. And Dr. Plucker's research examines education policy and talent development. At this time, I will hand the floor over to Dr. Gibalt. Welcome. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us here today. And for those of you who will be watching this recorded session, we're very excited that you're interested in our programs. And we hope that we can give you all the information that you need today. But if, the, if you think later and you have a few other questions, you can reach out to any of us and we'll be happy to, um, to chat with you um, further. Um, so a lot of times we're asked, you know, who is this program fo designed for? Um, and people try to, to see if this is a good fit for them. Um, our programs historically started out as being really designed for current practicing teachers or teachers of the gifted, but we have seen a huge trend over the past few years where we are having more and more people who maybe 
outside of education or adjacent to education or even parents and caregivers who are very interested in the content and the information that is in these programs. So Dr. Plucker and I have, uh, have done a lot of work to really uh, modify the courses and make sure that we can uh, meet the needs of this wide range of, of, um, of students. So we do have students who, graduate students who are um, teachers of the gifted, or they may be working in, in AP or an IB magnet school type programs. We also have a lot of general education teachers who just wanna know how to better modify and differentiate for their advanced learners. We have special education teachers, counselors, administrators, um, and even district gifted education coordinators who may be new to their positions and are seeking the credentials for, um, for their role. And then finally, like I mentioned, caregivers and also community leaders. So we're seeing some more people that are coming from um, education type organizations or people that might be interested in starting their own schools or working in education related and talent development type enrichment programs. So we have a, a lot of different uh, backgrounds of people that come into our program um, and from all over the world. So it's very interesting. And I think it really helps to bring this extra layer of uh, really rich and deep conversations into our core courses. Next slide. So our certificate and our master's programs are both fully online. So all of the classes that you will take will be completed completely online. They are, for the most part, they're asynchronous, meaning you could log in at any time because most of our, I would say, actually, I think almost all of our current students also work full time. So, um, you know, with the busy schedules and, and family members to care for, sometimes you might be logging in at nine o'clock at night after everybody has gone to bed. Um, and it's totally flexible um, with that type of a, a work schedule. We also do offer synchronous sessions. A few of our seminar classes may have uh, a few more synchronous sessions so that we can really get into some deeper conversations or allow some collaborative work. Um, but a lot of times we will also bring in expert guest speakers, both uh, Dr. Plucker and I, we've spent over a decade each on the board of directors of the National Association for Gifted Children. And we have a lot of really great contacts, um, the people who are writing and researching in this field, the textbooks and articles that you'll read in the class. There's a, um, you know, usually we have a connection with these people or we've written and worked with them. So we are, uh, always very uh, excited that uh, they are very gracious with their time and they often will come in and do some live chat sessions and uh, have guest experts and guest lectures in our courses. So those are often optional and we do try to poll the students at the beginning of the semester to see what days of the week or nights would work for that so that we can um, make the schedule so that the most people can really benefit from that. But if you really need to complete your program asynchronously, this is the type of program that would work for you. Next slide. So I'm going to talk first about our graduate certificate, and I see Dr. Plucker has joined us. He'll talk to you next about our master's degree. Um, in our graduate certificate program, it is 18 credits, so that is equivalent to six courses. It's five courses in a capstone practicum research class. And this one is designed for practicing educators. So usually people who already hold a master's degree in education, but want that additional endorsement of gifted education, or they may be new, new to teaching gifted education or seeking a role at the central office and they are seeking that credential. So our program is, um, it is aligned with the Maryland State Department of Education's Gifted and Talented Specialist Certificate. So those who go through this program, that have a master's degree and complete the program are eligible to add that Maryland state certificate. Um, and if they are in a state that is not Maryland, a lot of states have reciprocity these days, um, or you can share your transcripts within your own state. And a lot of times the, the courses that you're taking here will, um, they will meet the, the requirements of quite a few other states that we have. Um, so in this program, um, if, if students are applying who do not currently hold a master's degree, at the end of the session, I'm gonna talk about a third sort of option for you where you take two of our graduate certificates and put them together for a master's of science and education degree. Um, and we'll talk about that in just a minute, but that is an option for anyone coming into the certificate who does not already hold a master's degree. And in this program, uh, you will study foundations of gifted education, creativity, social, emotional, psychosocial development of the gifted and um, curriculum, um, curriculum instruction and assessment. Next slide. So this is just a sample schedule that um, you can see for our graduate certificate for that 18 credit program. Um, most people complete it in about four semesters. So it's just a little bit over a year and you can complete the program. And um, 
if you, you can see what this looks like if you were to start either in the fall term or the spring. We have one course that we currently offer in the summer, which is our creativity and education course. Um, we, depending on numbers, sometimes we also offer that in the fall. So you, you may have an option of, uh, if you'd like to take your summers off, um, sometimes that works out in the schedule as well. But in general, this is what most people's plans do look like. So we start off with the, the gifted learner course, and that is an introduction to gifted education, where we lay the foundations, we look at the history of the field and theories of intelligence, various definitions of giftedness. Uh, we look at major theorists and program models that are used in the field, as well as identification measures. And we talk about barriers to access uh, to advanced learning programs. Um, and then our next course is our twice exceptional learners course, which is a very unique one to Johns Hopkins University. We're one of the few universities that has um, courses in twice exceptionality. And so that's a course where you will look at how to identify and support students who are gifted and also have a learning difference or learning disability. So in that course, you will uh, learn how to modify lesson plans, how to um, work on IEPs, work on a team to make sure to ensure that it, there's a strengths-based approach used to nurture that student's uh, educational talent trajectory. Uh, and like, like I said, learning how to modify lessons and meet the affective needs also of twice exceptional learners. Um, we we go on then to our social, emotional, and psychosocial development of the gifted course. And in this, we're looking at um, some of the, um, applying some more psychology and counseling and teaching strategies into a class uh, where we also have an emphasis on underrepresented populations of gifted learners and examining counseling and consultation um, and other teaching strategies that can be used to address the affective development and healthy identity formation and talent development of advanced learners. Um, then we have our um, curriculum course, uh, which is an advanced strategies course, building on the knowledge that you've gained in those previous courses, training educators to develop and use various forms of assessments, both for placement decisions, but also for monitoring student growth and uh, progress in the content areas. Um, and then, like I said, our practicum it is a capstone course that those who are currently working in a school or in a classroom they will do their practicum within their own classroom setting, and they will be focusing on some students or maybe one student or a group of students who are gifted or creative, and they will be uh, modifying lessons and, and have some lesson observation um, and really hone their pra teaching practices as they are exiting and graduating from the program. Um, and they will be demonstrating that they meet the National Association for Gifted Children's teacher preparation standards. So on the next slide, I'm gonna introduce you to my colleague, Dr. Jonathan Plucker, and he will pick up with the uh, master's program. Thank you, Dr. Carrie Gilbald. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, I'm gonna talk about the master's program. Uh, in general, I um, am the uh, student advisor for our master's students. Um, uh, I, much of what Dr. Gilball talked about uh, with the uh, certificate program certainly applies to uh, the master's program. Um, uh, it is based on the NAGC and CEC program standards. Um, uh, and the actual uh, six credit certificate core is also the core of uh, the master's degree program. Can you go to the next slide, please? Uh, this is uh, a uh, sample schedule. Um, it tends to be different for different people based on when they start. Um, uh, there are uh, two different um, master's level seminars. Uh, we actually teach them both more as doctoral level seminars. So there's a lot of interaction, um, a, a lot of discussion uh, where we really go, go into things um, at sort of the deepest possible level to really make sure that everyone has a uh, very, very solid grounding of what the key issues are, what, what best practice looks like, um, and then also what we don't know and you know, the sorts of things that we need to figure out. Um, and then of course, um, you have uh, two electives um, that you draw from other Johns Hopkins programs and course um, uh, uh, courses. Uh, and then the uh, leadership course, and then the capstone course, which if you are uh, pursuing um, teacher certification, uh, capstone is a uh, practicum experience. 
Uh, if you're not, it tends to be a more in-depth look at what the research is on a set of given topics that, that you're that you're highly interested in. Um, so uh, very, very similar to what Dr. Gilbaugh talked about, but just sort of layering on that, you know, extra year of coursework. Can you go to the next slide, please? Um, we have a very strong emphasis, and I, Dr. Gilbert has already hit on much of this, a uh, very strong emphasis on equity in advanced programs and finding ways to close these sort of persistent excellence gaps that we see in every country around the world. Um, uh, very strong emphasis insists on twice exceptional students, um, working with families of twice exceptional students, et cetera. Um, all of your instructors are um, nationally and uh, for the most part, internationally known. Uh, uh, if you take a course with someone in our program, um, they are one of the best people on that topic in the entire world. Um, we think that that's what our students deserve. We really, really emphasize that. Um, uh, it's a very comprehensive set of coursework, um, like you've already heard. <laughs> Um, and not a lot of people talk much about twice exceptional students. Um, Carrie and I are in schools all the time. We know that twice exceptionality is a really important topic in so many people's lives, educators, our parents, the students themselves. Um, uh, so if anything, we are strengthening that throughout our program, just because we sense this real, real need to know what the research says. Um, and then it is fully online. And so I think this is a huge advantage because like if you're taking creativity or a seminar one, for example, with me, um, the people that you're interacting with, um, I'm, well, the last time I taught it, you would have been talking to um, a teacher from uh, China, um, a middle school teacher from Seattle, uh, another uh, Northwest teacher who's more elementary math, um, uh, a science teacher outside of San Francisco, someone from Missouri, someone from Jamaica, um, someone from Maryland, right? Like everyone coming together, sharing these different perspectives, talking about what, you know, common practices, sort of the barriers that they face to positive change. It just creates these really, really rich discussions. Um, and then I, Dr. Um, Excuse me, Dr. Kilpo mentioned this already, but I, I think it bears repeating. Um, uh, because everyone who you're interacting with in these courses, um, the actual instructors, are the field's international leaders. Um, if you have a question that we can't answer, we just call our friends and we bring them into it to help you answer that question. So it's not uncommon when I'm teaching the first seminar, we're going in depth through all the major instructional models that the field has had um, and, you know, all the major social emotional models, et cetera. Uh, occasionally a question comes up that together we couldn't figure out the answer to. And so rather than sit there and say, you know, who knows, right? I just immediately text the person whose model that we're talking about and say, hey, are, are you free right now for 15 minutes? At least half the time they are and they jump into the class. Um, and uh, the last time I did it, uh, the person that we brought in had never had that question asked before. He loved interacting with us about that. Um, uh, and so we really tried to bring this huge international network that we have into the classroom to benefit you as much as possible. That's a huge advantage of this program. Uh, next slide. Did I have one more, Carrie? I think it's back to me now. Back to you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I just want to kind of uh, piggyback on what uh, Dr. Plucker just mentioned about the international perspective. We are seeing a, a lot more interest in this program from students who are outside of the United States. And so while our, our program is aligned to our national standards, we do bring in the world gifted standards. Um, you know, we are frequent speakers at the ETSHA, European Council for High Ability. Um, and so we do have contacts um, overseas as well. And we are bringing more of that literature into our program as well to kind of look at this global perspective. Um, so our curriculum structure, uh, students do have five years to complete the program. So whether that's the certificate or the master's degree. So from the date of entry, you have five years to complete it. 
Um, students usually go through them uh, in about three or four semesters for the graduate certificate. So, you know, just about a year, year and a half. Um, and then students in the master's program usually complete that in about two years. Um, we do encourage students to take at least two, three credit classes per semester. If they want to take fewer in the summer or take a summer off, sometimes that can, that can work. But and really to to complete the program sort of in these cohort type model and to complete it on time, we do encourage you kind of to plan and think of taking six credit hours. Um, and as Sion will talk about too, uh, for financial aid, that is usually a requirement is to have six hours of credits. Um, next slide. <clears throat> Uh, next slide after that. So this is the other piece that I wanted to share with you um, is that we have a unique option at Johns Hopkins University. There are people that have so many great programs to choose from when you're looking at Johns Hopkins and the online programs. Um, and our program in gifted education, the certificate does pair really well with some of these other options that you see here. So we do have some students who may also be seeking a graduate certificate in autism or uh, another popular one that combines with ours is mind, brain, and teaching. You can see a couple of other options here. So if you, if you have this um, interest in maybe two related areas, um, you can apply to this integrated Master of Science program with concentration in educational studies. And then through that, you would have a de develop this customized course study where you would complete all of the courses in one certificate, all the courses in the other certificate, and then one additional um, methods course that sort of bridge the, bridges the two, and you would graduate with a master's of science in education. Um, so here I've listed, I think there are uh, about seven options currently um, to form this customized degree. And so I think that's a really neat, um, a neat feature. Next slide. And just to kind of wrap up, I wanted to, I, I asked some of our students to share some testimonials so that you could kind of read and hear from their voices. But um, on this slide, you're gonna see quotes from two of our recent graduates. And we are so proud of our students' accomplishments. Uh, Ms. Delinsky on the left, she was recently honored with the National Association for Gifted Children's Graduate Student Award. It's a major award in our field. And Ms. Lee on the right, she received the Mensa Foundation's Gifted Education Fellowship Award, which was a huge uh, financial award and a prestigious honor for her as well. So um, they've done you know, phenomenal work. All of our students were so very proud of them. We have another student who recently had an article published in the National Association for Gifted Children's Parenting for High Potential magazine. Um, we have many other students that go on to leadership roles in their districts or in their states. And most of our students also start to become very active in advocacy and they present at their state gifted association conferences. But um, Dr. Plucker and I, we, we really, this is one of our priorities. We really want to do all that we can to support what your individual learning goals are for the program. And so for some people that might be just, you know, developing the skills to be a better homeschooling parent. Um, others may want to pursue a PhD after graduation. So we really, I think that's another strength of our program is, is that that amount of individual care and attention, because we are a smaller program and we, we can really um, dig in and bring you on, bring you in on some of the work that we're doing. Um, before I pass it on to admissions, I wanted to just see if Dr. Plucker had anything to add to that, because I know he does a lot of um, mentoring as well. Thank you, Carrie. Um, it, uh, I guess I just want to echo, um, uh, like you're going to be in classes with just outstanding, outstanding students, uh, teachers, parents, community activists, um, who are just super passionate about these topics, throw themselves into it. Um, uh, you're going to learn a lot from us and from our colleagues and networks. You're going to learn a lot from the other students, too. So um, we hope you join us. Thank you, Dr. Gilball. Thank you. And I think it's uh, back to admissions. Thank you so much. All right. I'm going to monitor the question. Thank you, Dr. Plucker and Dr. Gibal. So now we're going to continue by going over the application requirements. Applicants must submit a completed application, which can be found on our school's website. The application fee is $80. We'll need all official transcripts, including institutions you may have taken courses but did not receive a degree. We'll need an essay, updated resume, two letters of recommendation. And finally, the GRE is not required for the gifted education programs. 
There are a few additional steps you need to take in order to complete the application process. If you're an international student, you must submit a TOEFL or IELTS score. And if your degree was completed outside of the US, you will need to complete a course-by-course -course evaluation. Additional information can be found on our school's website. And the tuition for the current academic school year is $918 per credit for in face-to-face -face courses. And for online courses, $972 plus a $20 per credit technology fee. Please know additional fees apply and they are charged separately from tuition. We encourage you to view our tuition and fees page on our school's website for the most up-to-date information about tuition and fees. And if you're interested in applying for financial aid, we strongly encourage you to apply for financial aid when you start your application. The School of Education offers a limited number of partial need-based institutional scholarships each year. The awards range on average from $500 to $1,500 per semester, and they're applied to tuition expenses uh, beginning in the fall semester. And please keep in mind, in order to apply for the SOE Endowed Scholarship, students must complete the FAFSA form. To learn if you qualify for the Endowed Scholarship or have any questions relating to financial aid, please visit our school's website. Thank you for attending the Gifted Education Virtual Information Session. At this time, we would like to open up the floor for questions. And Dr. Gibalt and Dr. Plucker, feel free. It looks like we do have some couple questions. Um, feel free to jump in and answer some questions here. There was one class I just typed, uh, sorry, one question I just replied to was asking if they uh, we're in a different certificate program. Is there an opportunity to take some of our classes? Um, I think that's what I understood. And we do have, I think we have about four classes in our certificate program that we open up as electives. And so we get a lot of people from our counseling program or mind, brain, and teaching that do take those as an elective. You just have to make sure that, um, that you have room in your schedule for an elective. I think that mostly those who are in another um, master's track could take usually up to two courses as an elective. And then there was another question about previous uh, credit. Um, so somebody who, is, who recently received a master's degree from another school, um, could any of that count? So if, if the courses are um, usually in, a, in an approved master's program from an accredited university, we can sometimes uh, grant credit for up to six credits to our master's program. We can't offer any for the certificate, but for the master's program, that is an option. I believe there also has to be, a they have to meet the recency rule. So they can't be any older than five years, I believe. But uh, if that's not correct, maybe my partners will. Uh, Karen, you all, you also, uh, there, there was sort of a first part to your question too about sort of what would be most appropriate. Um, uh, we can certainly talk with you about that offline if you'd like. Um, it sounds like the certificate pro program would probably make the most sense for you, but at the same time, given your other coursework, I have a feeling you're going to want to dig a little bit deeper beyond the uh, certificate courses into those seminar courses, leadership, et cetera. Um, so I, I don't think either option would be a bad option for you, but um, again, we, we'd be happy to talk offline um, to sort of counsel you into which one uh, you think is best. And then uh, Veronica uh, asked, how could an incoming student best prepare to start the master's program? Um, actually, I don't know if I've ever had that question before. I know, um, I was thinking that's a great question. It's <laughs> a fantastic question. Um, uh, I, I don't know, Dr. Gilbaugh, what would you what would you say to that? It, um, I think, um, you know, time management is kind of a thing to, to be thinking about, and we know that we have students who start our program who maybe it's been, you know, several years since they've been in college, and maybe they even 
are a, an older adult who um, you know, didn't have all the technology that we have today. So we do build in, in the first two classes, we, we really try to scaffold and support you. So you know, I invite somebody from the library to come in and walk us through how to conduct research online using the databases. You know, all, What are all the resources that are available to you? But I think that the one thing is to kind of, you know, to first of all, make sure that you have the technology that you need to support this. If you're gonna have to, you know, you're going to want to make sure that you have the, the high speed internet or the internet that would support being able to access your courses um, online and to be able to, you know, attend some um, synchronous sessions or to, um, you know, make sure that you have that technology in, 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 in place. Um, but then just to kind of think about your managing your time. So if you are a very busy adult that has other responsibilities or a full time job, just kind of getting ready to kind of prepare and, and work into your schedule. Okay, I'm going to spend, you know, one hour on Wednesdays. I'm going to have, you know, two hours on Thursdays that I will set aside for this. Um, and to maybe start trying to do a little bit of reading because we know that academic reading is very different from the type of reading that you might do for fun. Um, and we do prepare you again for that. We, we talk about different types of research and articles and, you know, how do you read all of these uh, statistics and what parts can I really focus on when I'm just trying to skim and get the gist of the article. But, you know, just kind of getting, getting into the swing of doing a little bit more academic reading, I think, can help also. I think Dr. Gilbo just implied that um, reading my books isn't as much fun as reading a best-selling novel, and I take fantastic umbrage at that, Dr. Gilbo. No, uh, no, no. I'm talking about research I'm articles. I'm kidding. I'm teasing. Um, it. Um, I would also add to th those are fantastic suggestions. Um, I would also add um, writing. I, I, I most of us once we get out of school, you just don't write as much as you used to. Um, I don't care what you write about, even if it's just a paragraph a day on whatever topic you want, you just to just to get get your mind back into that writing zone. That, that's that's one of the things that I think people struggle with initially transitioning into this program is just you just haven't had to do it in a while. Right. And so, um, uh, like I said, even just a paragraph a day on any topic you want, fiction, nonfiction, who cares, just to get that sort of writing muscle trained again, uh, it'll be a smoother transition for you. There's a question about 27 months teaching experience. So that applies to people who are going to apply for the Maryland State Gifted and Talented Specialist Certification after they graduate. Um, and so, um, you know, some of our students may be currently teaching in, in Maryland, but maybe they did a year in, you know, another state. Um, that does count for it. It's just three years of, of teaching experience. And, you know, if you're applying to the program when you only have two years, that's okay, because we know that by the time, if, if you're still going to be employed and, you know, by the time you graduate, you just need to really monitor that and make sure that you're, you're still working. But some people may start uh, and just know that they're going to meet that three years by the time they graduate. Uh, Patricia's question about opportunities for um, postdoctoral projects, and that could mean a few different things, um, Patricia. So, um, but uh, we 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 do have master's students work on projects with us um, uh, frequently. So, um, uh, uh, research projects, conference presentations. Uh, Dr. Uh, Gilbalt mentioned um, uh, uh, the person who wrote the article. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, we, there, there are plenty of those sorts of um, um, activities, and we, we absolutely encourage you to do them. Well, the remaining questions, I don't necessarily understand them 100%, so, um, but feel free to contact us, um, as, and we can, have a, we can have an offline discussion about them. Happy to answer any other questions that people come up with. All right, so it looks like there are no more questions. Thank you again for your interest in the Johns Hopkins School of Education. Here on this slide, I'd like to share some very important contact information. Any admissions related questions, especially about your application, please reach out to my colleague, James McCarty. His email and phone number is on the slide. Any program related questions, please reach out to Ms. Jennifer Fordham and her email address is on this slide. Thank you again to Dr. Plucker and Dr. Gibal for the wonderful presentation on the Gifted Education Program. We look forward to hearing from you, everyone. Have a wonderful evening.